Hello, 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 everyone. Again, I apologize for the croaky voice, hay fever season. But first, before I start, I want to tell you to subscribe, like, comment, share, do whatever you think you want to do there. And I want to thank everyone who's been watching and subscribing over the last, let's say, month or two. I've finally gotten to 1,000 subscribers, and thank you guys very, very, very much. So I will be answering some questions personally from you guys. So what I would recommend you do on this video or the previous one, put your questions there, and maybe tomorrow evening when I get home, I'll sit down, put all the questions together, do one video, and try and pump out as many um, answers for those as I can. All right? So thank you. So this one says, Joe runs a small company. The company is moving to a purpose-built office. And all that this means, the office was built specifically for Joe and his company. So one year, the office might have been a normal office. The next year, it might have been, I don't know, a restaurant or bakery. The next year, it might be a wood workshop. It's purpose-built. It was built for the purpose of that business, whatever that business does. Joe has asked an IT expert uh, for advice about suitable IT systems. The IT expert has proposed several alternative solutions. One solution is to set up a local area network that will provide a wired, well, wired connections for five PCs, a file server, um, a backup server, two network printers, secure internet access, wireless access point for laptops and other mobile devices. One other proposal is to use cloud storage for backup rather than using an on-site server. Discuss the implications for the company of using cloud storage for backup rather than an on-site server. I'll double check if I did this question as a draw question. If I haven't done it as a draw question, I'll do it right after this one, just to show how we would connect the devices, um, so the means or methods of connection, the, the, how the data would be sent, so is it going to be bi-directional, back and forth? I'll have a look. So I just double-checked, and I will, I will, I will do that question as a draw question. I'll do it now as well, so I'll, you probably have two or three videos uploaded tomorrow. So learners, discuss, okay, let's jump straight into cloud-based backup. So stored, managed by third party. So that's neither good nor bad. It could be good and it could be bad. So stored and managed by a third party. What this means, if Microsoft is holding your data, that's good because the two, three, maybe even 50 IT people that you have working in your company or your school will never, 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 ever get security as good, as right, as, as strong, as stable, as secure as Microsoft's 50,000 employees who maybe 10,000 or 1,000 of them do nothing but security, right? So it's neither good nor bad. But at the same time, if Microsoft decides, it's now, I think it's like 11 p.m. now, 12, 12 a.m. now. If Microsoft decides, you know what? Let's change our policies overnight whilst most people are sleeping and not at work so that we can change the policies and get access to their data plus maybe share the data as well to other people that want it. You can't do anything about it. It's their policies, it's their company. Um, you signed up, you accepted the terms and conditions. Most people never read them. I've never read them. And they can do whatever within reason, obviously. I'm being very extreme here, but within reason. Next, we have stored offsite. That could be, that's typically very, very good because let's say you've stored everything in the cloud. You work in a school, you work in an office, you stored everything in the cloud. There's an earthquake, a fire, the building go, burns flat to the ground. And you think, oh my God, we made a million pounds a day for the last 10 days. If we don't have our data, if we don't have our files, we cannot make that million pound a day. What would you do? You'd simply run to Curry's PC World Amazon, buy some laptops, buy some PCs, set them up in another building as quickly as possible and keep making your million pounds a day. That's what you would do. So it says cost must be weighed up as well. So cloud is not always going to be cheaper. If you're a company that needs constant access back and forth, upload, download to your stuff, and maybe you're in a country where you get charged per gigabyte or per terabyte, that might not be the best option for you. Whereas here in the UK, we don't really worry about stuff like that. Because even on my mobile phone, I pay, what, £10 a month, I get 15 gigabytes of um, data. Some places in America, they still have dial-up connections. And that's 56 kilobits per second. Not megabits, not gigabits, 56 kilobits per second. That's very, very slow. So per gigabyte might cost a lot for them. Uh, in some cases, you pay only for what is used. If needed, increased storage can pay for extra. That's very true as well. 
I have my Google Drive, as I've mentioned many times. One pound fifty nine, I get one hundred gigabytes of online cloud backup storage, all of that stuff. If I needed more, I don't have to go out and it's it's midnight now. I need more storage now, 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 now. I I'm not gonna find a shop open now. Amazon doesn't deliver at midnight. I need the storage now to back up some files so I can make money. Um, cloud is gonna be perfect. I can pay an extra two pounds, let's say, and I can get two hundred gigabytes of storage straight away. So a client sends me something, I need to back it up for them. And they say, you know what, I'll pay you £50 a day to back this stuff up because I need it. It's so urgent for me. This is very secure stuff, right? You pay for what you use. If you don't use it, you can go down a level. If you want more, you can always go up a level. Environmental issues. If you think about every single person, this is, again, mostly good, but can be bad as well. Because there are so many servers around the world, they're using a lot of power. However, in contrast, imagine that every single person in the entire world bought a super fast, amazing laptop. And then in three, four, five years time, they think, oh, I don't want this one anymore. Where's it going to end up? It's going to end up in a landfill somewhere in a third world country because the governments are so corrupt that they've just shipped it somewhere and dumped it. Right. So environmental issues will come up. And most of the plastics and chemicals in these machines, these laptops, these phones, these tablets, they are poisonous to people. They're poisonous to animals. They actually destroy water supplies. So that could be an issue there as well. And that could be a good side as well. So there's good and bad for most of these. And remember, I think it said discuss. We're discussing. These are some of the, the points that we can use to go back and forth. Um, where are we again? Um, most, oh, sorry, not most, must ensure must ensure have security protocols in place which comply with the GDPR. That's correct. GDPR um, of 2018, I think it was updated in 2018. That was the very first one anyway. People must have access to their data. People must have control of their data. If, a com if you call a company and say, I want you to delete everything about me, they have a certain time frame in which they have to comply with that. So whatever protocols your Google Drive or your OneDrive is using, if, if, if you're a business cus customer, they must have certain protocols in place to ensure that your data is super, super, super secure. Uh, next, well, I already mentioned this one. Giving a third party access to secure data uh, introduces, S sorry guys, extra risk. That's very true as well. That's what, that's what I mentioned here at the top, store managed by a third party. So that's the opposite of that. So it's good and it's bad. How is it good again? It's good because the people at Microsoft are going to be better at security than the four or five IT guys in your school. However, the people at Microsoft can also change their minds and change their policies in a way that adversely affects, that negatively affects you, the customer. They might start selling your files to other people. Uh, where are we now? There may be security concerns when using online services as they are often targeted by hackers because of the high profile nature. Very true as well. Whenever you go online, this is why I've said to you guys in the previous videos, always use a VPN whenever you're using like the KFC Wi-Fi, the McDonald's Wi-Fi. Otherwise, you would think you're doing a basic bank transfer, you pay, you're paying for something on Amazon, and you might be on a totally different website giving someone your bank details. So please, please, please use a VPN or just don't use those connections. Whenever you connect to the internet, there is always a chance of you being hacked. There is always a chance of malware because this is just how the internet is these nefarious or bad people, this is what they do. Their entire job for some of them is to sit down and try to find vulner vulnerabilities in systems and exploit those vulnerabilities so that they can make money in some cases. Backup performance is dependent on the quality and availability of an internet connection. Uh, good and bad. Internet is obviously a very, very good thing, but if you don't have internet, there's no way you can use cloud. If you have really spotty, really slow, not very great internet, again, places in America, America, one of the biggest, most powerful countries in the world, they're still using dial-up connection. Here in London, I've never tested a 3G connection that's under one megabyte, one megabyte. Whereas in America, they have internet that people use in their houses for 56, uh, roughly 56-ish kilobits, very, very slow. So again, you have to have a relatively stable, relatively good connection, and you have to have a lot of data on that connection because with cloud, let's say we're using OneDrive, we can back stuff up there and leave it there. But as you guys know, we can also use cloud storage and cloud computing together. So I can put a, 
a Word document there and I can also edit the Word document on OneDrive. So there's going to be a constant connection, sending and receiving data from my PC to the Word document from the servers which has the Word document back to my PC. Can be set up uh, automatically, backup, sync with mobile devices, ensuring that the latest information is available to those that need it. This also improves security. If any device is lost or stolen, the data will be available on server. As I said before, yeah, it syncs across multiple devices. So sometimes I don't have my laptop and someone says, oh, can you send me the file that we worked on yesterday, please? I'll jump on my phone. I'll go onto my OneDrive, my SharePoint, my Google Drive, and I'll just send the file. Perfect. If I lose my phone, I have, my phone is password protected, fingerprint protected. So if I lose my phone, yes, I'm going to be upset. And imagine I'm someone, again, making a million pounds a day. So I'm going to be upset because I've lost a phone. But at the same time, or, or I've lost a laptop. At the same time, I have all my files on the cloud. I want to continue making my one million pounds a day. I'm going to simply buy another laptop for however much I want to spend on a laptop or a phone and continue working because all my stuff is on the cloud. All I would need is a new device and an active internet connection. You can access it remotely. That's one of the main things about um, cloud, sorry, uh, is that you can access it remotely anywhere in the world I am. When I'm in Jamaica, I can send people files. When I'm in America, I can send people files. When I'm in India, I can send people files. It doesn't matter where I am. I can always, once I have a decent internet connection, I can always get to those files and share them as and when I need to. Large storage capacity, very, very true. Um, most schools have a semi-unlimited um, data package with Office 365. If you ever manage to log into your Outlook email, your personal one, you would normally have about five gigabytes of storage, right? When you have an Office 365 on through your company or a school like I do, I, that, that, that five gigabyte thing is not there. There's nothing there indicating how much storage you have. So it is semi-unlimited because nothing is truly unlimited, right? I could, I have already tested it and I've uploaded 200 gigabytes worth of stuff and I can keep uploading more. So those are some of the cloud-based backup things that we need, that we can consider. These are some of the points that we can use to discuss. Again, going back and forth, back and forth, negative, positive, negative, positive. We also now have to speak about the on-site server. Right? So again, good and bad of that. So the company has complete control, in particular, uh, control over security of the data. That's true as well. Again, this is, this is good and bad. The company having complete control, meaning that their policies will govern that data. So they can decide we'll never share this personal information with anyone. Microsoft could get hacked as good as their security is. If the NSA can get hacked, Microsoft can get hacked, right? Microsoft gets hacked, all the data is out there, and there's nothing you can do because you decided to use their services. Yes, you might be able to sue them afterwards, but it's too late at that point. Cost to be weighed up. Cost of server may need to employ, yes, may need to employ IT staff to run the system. So as I've mentioned, most schools, companies have some IT person sitting there waiting for stuff to go bad. That's their entire job in some cases. They have to sit there and they have to wait. Servers cost a lot of money. I was doing a course recently with some of my students and I asked them to look for, I don't know, some random servers online. And someone came back to me and showed me one that was £93,000 for a single server system. Right? I don't know which I don't remember which one it was. It might have been HP or Dell, but £93,000 for a single computer, albeit a very, very, very powerful computer. But that's the price of houses in some places in the UK, right? Um, and then you will still have to hire someone to monitor, manage, update, fix. Whereas when you use Microsoft, it's like, oh, I, I don't care about it. I pay them, as I said, for me, £1.59 a month for Google Drive. I don't care what Google is doing. That has nothing to do with me, right? Their systems crash, nothing to do with me. I might not be able to access my stuff, but I don't then have to pay them extra to fix their system. It's already in my package that they need to fix. They need to just sort that out. If extra capacity is needed, uh, we'll need to purchase additional server. That is very true. Now, typically speaking, you can slot things or let's just say slot hard drives in, into a server rack. That's an easy way to think of it. And if I need more storage, whereas with the cloud, I can simply say, oh, I'm paying £1.59, you know what, let me just pay the £2 and get more storage. With this one, I'm going to have to go out or go on Amazon, order something, sit there, wait for it to come, plug it in, set it up, and that's how I get to use it. So not the most efficient way to work if speed 
and efficiency is something that's important. So it has no reliance on internet connection. It, there might be reliance on a network connection, but not internet. So let me explain that quickly. A network connection, so this is where we have a switch and everything is plugged into the switch. So even if there's no internet, I can still access the, um, the shared files on, let's say, the, the uh, backup server or the file server, right? Whereas with the cloud, you must have an internet connection. You must be able to connect to the internet. Cannot be accessed remotely. Cannot auto-sync with mobile devices unless additional systems put in place. For example, a VPN. Very true. You would have to connect this server to the internet and allow people to connect to the server using a VPN before you can upload files, share files, back stuff up. Again, VPNs are typically very secure, but um, this way does need a lot more knowledge. Whereas with the cloud, username, password, maybe two-factor authentication, login, done, nothing else. Offsite storage of backups should be considered. Very true, could be costly, could be time-consuming. Um, I have, let's say, 100 gigabytes of stuff on a work laptop. I should never have a backup, or the only backup of that should never only be in the building I'm in. There should always be a physical backup somewhere else. So again, if my building burns flat to the ground, I can go there, recover this, and continue working. Cloud, again, very easy. I can back up on Google Drive. I can back up on OneDrive. I can back up on, what's the other one called? iCloud Drive. I can back up on Dropbox, multiple places at the same time. If Google doesn't work tomorrow, I can say, okay, well, I have the same data on OneDrive, so let me just grab it from OneDrive. If Amazon Drive doesn't work tomorrow, I can grab it from Google Drive, so on and so forth, okay? So next we have natural disasters, example, fires and floods. As I've mentioned before, if that building burns to the ground, you lose everything if you don't have a backup, and you lose that £93,000 you spent on that one server or however many servers you have, you lose that money. Yes, you might be insured, but the fact is you lose money, you lose time. With cloud, you log into another PC, you keep working. If my school burns down tomorrow, they'll probably send us home and say work from home for the next week or five weeks. Because school's burnt down. But I can still access everything because it's on, um, I think I use One OneDrive mainly. It's on OneDrive. So this is how I would go back and forth with a with discussion about cloud-based backup versus on-site backup. There is good and bad of, for both of them. These, these are all the points the examiner has mentioned. So please take as many as you want. I believe that question was an eight marker. Let's go back up and check. Yeah, it was an eight marker. So I would say maybe four points from each. Or um, to be fair, you have enough points. Go overboard. Do one good, one bad for cloud. One good, one bad for um, on-site. And keep going back and forth. One good, one bad for cloud. One good. There's no wrong way to do this once you discuss, once you go back and forth, good and bad, implications, the end result, or what would happen if you were to use cloud, what would happen if you were to use on-site server. That's what that means. So that's it. Thank you guys for watching. I'm going to do the draw question on the same one now using these things here because this match matches really nicely with how draw questions should be.